Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. If you're new to Garageaholic, please like, subscribe, and comment. Only because my channel has a lot of really good information about building E30s, in particular M3s, and this build behind me, this Fire Orange E30 M3 S54 with air jacks, is going to be a real special build. So I'm actually gonna be doing air jack installation today, and there'll be a lot of technical details of what I'm doing, and I'm hoping that you can glean something from this. The previous videos have been kind of glossed over some of those details, and I really don't want to do that in this episode. I really want to help you understand what my mode of thinking is moving forward on a lot of this stuff. So I think that a lot of the future videos will be a little bit more detailed. Hopefully it doesn't bore you guys, but hopefully entertaining as well. So guys, thanks for watching, and if you're new, welcome. Now this here is one of my favorite parts of the project because this is like the rarest part you can find. Um, and it is an Evo 2 wing for the E30 M3. It is so light. And this carbon fiber splitter with a diffuser is actually gets mounted on there. And it has four different positions here. One, two, three. And actually it's got one, two, three positions amongst four holes. And we've got all the hardware that we need here. And it's just a matter of installing it. I think I'm going to install it in the coolest position, which is the one that's the highest up. Um, and then we've got our hardware to install this actually on the trunk lid, so that'll be super easy and we'll get this out of the way. I do want to say this, I'm going to be using hand tools for the entire part of building this. I will not be using any type of impact tools in order to get this installed. Um, because if I, again, jam it too much and crack it, um, that's going to be really bad for business. Now I am dying to get these fenders and these side skirts on, but I can't because I need to get the air jacks in. Unfortunately, I can only install the air jacks loosely and I can't fully tighten them because I have these rings that are supposed to clamp on either side of the, the air jacks and get the height installed where it needs to be. I don't quite know where the height needs to be because I don't have the subframes yet because they're still in powder coat. And I also don't have the wheels and tires installed. So I don't know exactly where that droop is gonna be. So it's kind of like a snowball effect. I don't have the tool to install and tighten these guys, kind of like coilovers on your car where you use that special tool to get to lock into the indents and get that full tight. I don't have that yet, but I can, I think, install it loosely. And we're gonna do that now and just see where things fall, see how low that is on the back and, and in the front. And when I think I got it into a good spot um, compared to where the side skirt is, I think I'm just gonna fully tighten it and then uh, make the adjustments later uh, if I have to and remove those parts. Now I have a pretty good idea on where this is supposed to land. Once I put the side skirt on, I know that the bottom of this guy should basically be, should be pretty level with the bottom of the hole that I made in the, in the side skirt. So I know that based on that, I'm gonna get probably the maximum amount of throw. And I think that this is going to dictate 
where the rears are going to be and make sure that, that car is level because the rears are a lot easier to adjust. And of course, we can't forget the end cap, which again has the same indentations here and using the same tool to tighten that down. Okay. And finally, this little nifty piece is kind of like a banjo joint, which has a O-ring seal in here that allows you to install directly into the top of the air jack. And then this goes to a quarter inch hose, which we are not going to install yet because we have to make sure that we trim it to length. We have to know how we're going to route this and we're going to route it all the way to the back where the tank is going to be. Now, as I said earlier, the side skirt is going to dictate the height on the front. So if I were to try to feign the installation of the side skirt, I'll see that, well, you won't be able to see it very well, but this is kind of where the side skirt's gonna live. And it, it, in and of itself, looks like it's right at the edge, which is perfect. So I think that this might actually be, yeah, maybe more like, like that. It's almost kind of peeking through a little bit. You can kind of see that. And that I think is a really good height to start with because when this thing goes fully down, I think that we can easily adjust that to go lower as needed as well. So now I've got the air jack installed in its relative location. I can't fully tighten it down because I don't have the correct tool to insert into these indents here, but I can start routing my air lines. This is a six millimeter compression fitting and I've got tons of that hose. And I need to make sure that I can route this one and that one over to the back of the car where the tank is gonna reside underneath the rear trunk lid. Now this is the tank. We don't have it right now because it's getting hydro dipped. But what we're going to be doing is we have a compressor that's going to end up going into the tank from here. So the compressor is going to be pressurizing the tank and we're going to be using this line right here that's going to end up going out to this guy right here. Now this is a five-way valve where we have four, five ports, the top A and B. A is probably going to go to the left side of the car and B is going to go to the right side of the car, you know, the two pairs. P is going to be coming from the tank. Now that's where the pressurized air is going to be coming to. And R and S are the exhaust ports respectively. And there's a 12 volt signal that I'm going to have controlled by an Arduino, which is going to be actually controlled by a factory BMW switch. Like I said, uh, on this build, everything on this car is going to be controlled by a factory switch and modified the discrete IO through open ground signals to control things on this car. And there'll be safeties in included obviously for that. But for now, I just wanted to get the overall routing of the lines set up. Now this is usually how they want to do it. Now there's going to be two separate systems. The first system that I talked about, the first system that I talked about is the, um, the solenoid, right? The solenoid system and how am I going to control the solenoid through the use of a BMW switch? That's going to be a completely independent system from this one, which is what's going to maintain pressure in the tank? When is the compressor going to turn on? When is it going to turn off? I'm going to use some of this um, schematic, but not all of it. And the reason being is because I don't need a things like a uh, a pressure gauge to the, the car. We're not gonna have a gauge in here. You know, he doesn't care what pressure it is. He just needs to know that it's at pressure or not at pressure. We are gonna have a relay that's gonna control the, uh, the, the actual pump to turn on and off through the pressure switch, which is right here. And this pressure switch here is a, I believe it's a hundred and, there it is. This is a 170 PSI on, 200 PSI off pressure switch that's going to be dictating when this relay coil is to be turned on and off, turning the pump on and off. So we have a lot of work we need to do from the control side, but from the installation side right now, which is what I'm mainly concerned about on this chassis, I need to start routing the air lines and they all need to go to the back of the car. So that's where the hole is gonna reside and now I need to install the grommet here. Always wanna grommet these things. So we got a grommet just like that. And we need to paint this so we don't have any exposed metal in there. So we'll paint it as well and we will install the grommet right through the hose and it'll look something like this. So yeah, we're kind of getting into the details here but that's what this is all about. And I want you guys to understand my mode of thinking as I'm going through this. Now I'm trying to set the fronts, the heights to be as close to each other as possible now that I've identified that I want the bottom to kind of poke out the bottom of the, of the side skirt. But how do I know that the car is actually level? I'm not gonna use a level, I'm actually gonna measure. So I'm gonna measure the same point on both sides of the car and see what the offset is between that. And then I'm gonna use that offset to make sure that this is higher or lower by that same exact offset. 
<clears throat> that would ensure that I'm as close to the same to relative to ground as possible, which is the really important part when you're using jacks, uh, air jacks is, is the car gonna be level when it's on the jacks? I've measured both sides and I've determined that this is actually a quarter inch higher, which means that this needs to be a quarter inch higher than the uh, other side. And I'm gonna use this here as the, uh, as the base. I'm gonna measure from the ground up and make sure that this is actually a quarter inch higher than that one because I've already determined that that one is poking through as much as I want. snake through you can see the uh, as I stated earlier the tank is going to be mounted underneath the trunk lid and all of the pump is also the pump is also going to be there because we're going to keep this uh, spare wheel well for actually a spare wheel so the tank is going to be under underneath here and I again I'm not sure if the tank outlet is going to be on this side or that side but I can always ride it around also the electronics are going to be here the battery is right there so the relay that controls the, uh, the pump can also be here, so the whole system will be in one concise location and it will be easily serviceable as well. But for now, all I wanna do is just cut this and then start to install the rear air jacks because that actually is gonna be a lot easier to adjust the height, to install generally, and maintain after the fact. Let's start. Now we can get the cap on. Screw that on. No, not bad at all. I mean, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see it poking through right there. the routing is going to work is that A and B are the outputs. Now the way that I've designed this is that A is going to go to the fronts and B is going to go to the rears. So basically this rear is the sum of the two in the rear that go to the T and that goes into that one. And of course the fronts are going to go into that one. And this guy is going to, is going to come from the uh, actual um, tank and it's gonna be opening and closing as a result of the 12 volt signal that I'm gonna be giving it from the Arduino. I know I kinda of said that before, but I wanna talk about that a little bit more because we're gonna go into that into a lot more detail as we start the electrical integration of this car in the, in the next coming weeks. Right now, I think that we're in good shape. We don't need to keep these on for now, but we are gonna be mounting this in the trunk, so it's in a good spot. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope that this gives you a really good idea of what it takes to install air jacks, some of the technical nuances that are required for the mechanical side. And of course, in future episodes, we're gonna go into the electro uh, mechanical side and installing the air jack system and the routing of the air lines. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. My name is Frank from Garageaholic, and I will see you later.